Sometimes you have a website that just can't be run locally. Maybe there's complex databases involved or a crazy CMS, or you don't even have a copy of all the source code needed to run the website locally. Whatever it is, this particular site just has to run on its actual web server on the live internet, and there's nothing you can do about it. In this situation, you can still use CodeKit to style that site and see your CSS changes live in real time without uploading files to your web server. At a demo of this, I'm going to work with one of my favorite blogs, DaringFireball.net. It's by this guy, John Gruber, who 99 times out of 100 is not too dumb. If you're not already reading Daring Fireball, I highly recommend it. What I'm going to do is grab a copy of the style sheet for this page and work on that only on my Mac and leave everything else served from the internet. So I'll inspect the page, open up the head element, and find the main style sheet, which is right here. It's in a CSS subfolder, and it's called fireballscreen.css. I've downloaded a copy of that to this folder, Fireball, on my Mac, and I've already added Fireball to CodeKit as a project. You can see there's that CSS file right here. Now, I've also set some custom settings in Project Settings. I'll open that up, and in Browser Refreshing, I've told CodeKit that this project needs an external server, and that external server is running at this address, which is an actual internet address, HTTPS daringfireball.net. What this means is when I hit the preview button to load the site in my browser, CodeKit will communicate with the server running here to fetch all of the content for the website. Except, because I have this box checked, whenever CodeKit comes across a CSS file, it will first check to see if there's a local copy of that CSS file in the project. If there is, CodeKit will serve that file instead of the one on the remote server. If there is no local CSS file matching that path, then the one from the server comes through just as it would normally. And that means it's really important for our local CSS file to have a path that matches the one in the head element on the actual server. In other words, the browser expects to find this main style sheet in a CSS subfolder and named fireball underscore screen. So in our project, we have a CSS subfolder and fireball underscore screen. The only way CodeKit knows to replace this remote CSS file with the local one is that the paths are identical. Now I already have this project pulled up in CodeKit's preview server in this second tab, but before we switch, notice that we're always dealing with SSL at daringfireball.net. Even if we tried to go to just the regular HTTP colon slash slash, we'd get redirected to the page protected by SSL. And for that reason, I've enabled SSL on all of our preview servers with this checkbox right here. But when we load our preview tab, you'll get a warning from any browser saying, hey, this is not secure. This certificate is not signed by a valid certificate authority like VeriSign or Komodo. CodeKit certificates are just self-signed, which works for a development environment where all we're concerned about is testing the site. We're not trying to protect actual data or real users. And that's very important. You would never use self-signed certificates like this in a real environment. You should always heed that warning. So with that done, I will just pop open this CSS file in Sublime. And the first thing at the top, John says, if I copy it without permission, he will mock me. Uh, John, people have been doing that for years. You're a little late to the party. And then I'll scroll down and find the background color right here. And I'll just uncomment this line that I've added where I change it to black. And I'll hit Command S to save the file. There's a little bit of latency involved in the round trip to the live internet server. But about a half second later, we get Daring Fireball with a black background. And then I can do this again. Maybe we want red. I'll save that file. And again, we'll get Daring Fireball with a red background. So all of the content of the website is still coming from the internet at daringfireball.net. But CodeKit is overriding the remote CSS file with the local copy that we have on our Mac. In our example today, it was really easy to tell when our local CSS file took effect, right? The page background color changed. Sometimes, though, if you're working on really subtle CSS or you've made a mistake and the cascade isn't applied correctly, you may be wondering, well, is the local file even being used at all or am I still looking at the CSS file from the remote server? It's easy to tell. Just open up the inspector, choose the network tab, and then CSS to see only CSS files. You'll need to reload the page once so that the browser can track resources as they come in from the server, and then select the CSS file in question, fireball screen for us. If this file was served as a local override by CodeKit, you'll find an extra response header that says CodeKit info local CSS override. For style sheets that were not served locally, that came in from the remote server itself unmodified, like Fireball Unicode, 
that response header won't exist.